Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Katerina. Today I will be making a card with a very cool background. I'm going to be creating the bokeh effect. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. What I mean is the blurry background that you get in photos. I've been playing with a stamp set with geometric stamps and I really wanted to use the solid circles. The only problem is that I don't have many dye inks. The majority of inks that I have are distress inks. So what I thought would be great is to do some distressing stamping and reactivating it with water to create a nice soft bokeh effect. This is not a new technique. I used this technique a few times before myself, but I have never seen anyone using it to create the bokeh effect. Normally people paint a background using watercolors or distress inks and then they use a circle stencil and white pigment inks to create the circles. I did this myself as well for one of my Christmas cards. So I thought it would be fun to show you another option to create the bokeh effect by using distress inks and stamps. Or stencils, you can also use stencils if you don't have stamps. So let's jump into it. Here are some of the products I will be using. The stamp set is from Create a Smile. This exact stamp set is not available anymore. It seems like it has been replaced and the new stamp set looks much better. There are only the solid and outline stamps and they added a few more sizes. As I said, I'm going to be using Distress Inks for the stamping. I picked seven shades of green. You don't need as many, but I just could not decide. The cardstock I'm using here is the Canson XL watercolor paper and I taped it onto a board with a painter's tape. When it comes to the cardstock, it is important to have a cardstock that can handle water and also that is quite smooth for the stamps to stamp well. So I started stamping. I'm going to speed up the video as I'm not doing anything super special. I used three sizes of the circle. I wish there was a size between the big circle and the middle one, but it doesn't really matter. And as I said, if you don't have stamps, you can also use a stencil that has different sizes of circles. As you can see, I stamped randomly, switching between the colors, starting with the biggest stamp, then the middle stamp, and lastly the smallest stamp. Some circles were overlapping. It was also easy to restamp despite using acrylic blocks. You can also use a stamping tool, but I think that would be just too tedious. Here the acrylic blocks were much better and quicker option. And after every change of the color, I dabbed the stamp onto a baby wipe and then I dried it onto a paper towel. So I don't contaminate the colors, especially when switching from the darker to lighter shade. But sometimes I found that the stamping was better when the stamp was slightly wet. So the paper towel is really optional. As you see, I stamped a lot of circles. You don't have to stamp that many. It is all up to you. So the next step is the fan step. And that is reactivating the inks with water. I used a spray bottle and I sprayed the cardstock a few times. You don't need much. And then I used a brush to spread the water across the panel. The stamp circles kept their shape but are much softer. And because the water activated the color, I was able to use my brush to spread the color across the panel. And then I let it air dry. Depending on your color choice and the amount of circles you create, your colors might not be too vivid. If you would like to have more saturated colors, you can always squeeze the inks on a side, add water and add the color that way. Let me show you one more background. I managed to decrease the inks to five. I used shades of blue and gray. The colors are not as vivid as on the green panel, which will create much lighter background. The colors are really up to you. In my recent videos, I was making masculine and Father's Day cards. So I kept the theme and I chose colors that my husband would like. He also liked an orange background that I created. Again, once I was finished, I let the piece air dry. You can also use a heat gun if you are in a hurry. Here are the backgrounds fully dry. I think they both look very nice. For the cards, I picked a stamp set with a big bold sentiments from Avery L. This was the simplest thing to do. You can also use a die cut sentiment or add here a stamped image on top of it. For the green background, I used the sentiment that says celebrate and I treated it with anesthetic powder. Then I stamped it with Versamark ink and I also restamped just to make sure I'm getting a good impression. And I heat embossed it using a white embossing powder. For the blue background, I picked the big happy birthday sentiment and I stamped it with the Versafine ink in onyx black. Since I'm using a watercolor cardstock with a little bit of texture, I had to stamp it multiple times to get a good impression. After I was done stamping, I adhered both of the panels on top of a card base that I made out of craft cardstock. 
So here are the finished cards. I really like the bokeh effect. I also created more backgrounds off camera using other colors. An orange background, a turquoise background, and one background in pink. Those backgrounds are super simple. There are so many color combinations you can do. So I hope you will try make these yourself as well. If you like these cards, I would really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you would like to see more ideas using the technique of stamping and reactivating distress inks, just click on the video on the top. And if you would like to see another technique of creating a background with the bokeh effect, click on the video below. This is a Christmas card, but you can always create something else. So that is all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you soon.